Hello everyone, uh, this is Steven from Red Poly. In this video we'll talk about several things. Of course, first, uh, how to upload SLM files or mesh asset files back to the grid, uh, which will allow you to become a full creator of the link set. Um, then we talk about how to become a creator of a link set without uploading. Uh, this is pretty basic stuff. Uh, then we talk about how to make uh, rigged clothing to be inspectable by others. As you know, inspect is a very powerful tool, but currently you cannot inspect rigged items. Uh, then we talk about animations and what is the difference between bad animation and good animation and how it reflects to the rigged clothing. So what you have here is um, the package of this uh, biker girl jacket. Uh, we have uh, HUD uh, with the file delivery system. I, got it already worn on my uh, on my uh, desktop here so uh, basically uh, what you need to do is to click download or instructions which brings this tutorial and some text instructions but basically you need to click download what's going on here we have a link to download the mesh files okay now I already did that so I'll go to my desktop here and take a look at this I have my mesh files here so this is what i downloaded from our website it's a zip folder uh, with um, the mesh files but basically when you unpack it you got this now what you have here is several several different models uh, actually seven uh, for this particular jacket and uh, you have um they come in pairs so this file and this file uh, are composing a single model for example this is the former model uh, let's talk about what you have here. We have, of course, five different standard sized uh, models. Uh, if you want to know more about standard sizing initiative, there is a lot of information. Uh, we have the, our newest edition, the Red Rig here. And we have the Deformer uh, model that is uh, created to work eventually with the Quarrel um, Deformer Mesh uh, plugin. So I will pause the video right now and I will log in into the beta grid because I want to upload a test uh, as a test to the beta grid. And as you know, the beta grid is free. Uh, so it's a cool place to test things uh, without spending any money. So I will pause the video and we'll see there. Okay, I'm, I'm here on the beta grid. So what I want to do now is to upload one of those files that you downloaded. So what I do, I go here to my inventory, of course, go here to plus sign and I click upload and I click model. Now there is something very important you need to know about mesh uploading. You need to be certified for mesh uploading. This means you need to take a tutorial uh, from Linden Lab and you need to have payment info on file. If you don't have payment info on file, you cannot upload meshes. And, uh, this step here is pretty much useless for you uh, and there is another thing you need to be uh, certified to upload meshes to the beta grid and to the main grid of course if you want to upload to the beta grid at all so it's a different uh, places for to get certified now i will upload uh, our red rig model here but you can you need to do the same steps for all those models so i click open and see the die file here and now I need to wait a bit. See, there is a loading text here and I need to wait for uh, my model to come to the preview. It takes some time. Notice now the model is here and it's already rigged. Uh, it's in a pose. Uh, all the LODs are set and in upload options, we have include skin weight already set here into the physics we have a small physics already set so basically you don't need to change anything here if you of course if you don't want how to do it now the land impact of this particular object is solely dependent on this LOD here the lowest LOD so you can set those triangles to zero and the land impact here will go much more much more uh, lower so uh, right now these settings are pretty cool uh, because when you uh, wear rig clothing 
The calculations for LOD transitions are based on your avatar size, no the clothing size. For example, if you upload a rigged uh, jewelry, uh, it will not change LODs because the calculations are related to the whole avatar size. This is a very important thing to, to know. And so this LOD settings are pretty much invisible for this item. So I need to click now the calculate weights and fee button and wait a bit. Of course, I will click it and I'll pause the video for, because this takes kind of a minute. So I'll pause it now. Okay, the calculation process took some time, but now I have uploading fee calculated, the land impact, etc. And my upload button is already uh, available. So next step is to click it. And I will pause the video one more time. Okay, the uploading process took uh, some time, but it was successful. Now I have this new object here in my object I called uh, BG Red Rig. So um, I'm using, there's another note, I'm using the official viewer uh, from Linden Lab. And when you do this, uh, I mean uploading, you need to use the same viewer. It's very important because this is how those files, the SLM files were generated. So if you use a third party viewer, uh, you may get some errors and this is uh, easy avoidable by using the official viewer. Okay, now I will wear this just by double click it and notice it it worn on my right hand, but because this is a rigged item, it's already worn on my avatar. That was the process of uploading this. It was it's pretty simple. Now I strongly advise you not to edit the jacket when uh, it, it's on you because uh, you will probably crash. So I will detach this and I'll raise it on the ground. And this is how the jacket looks like. Okay, let's go and let's uh, just set a color here to make it a little bit more uh, nice looking. Uh, it's a two prim jacket. Uh, it has m multiple uh, material IDs or a texture size, but this is not important in this video. A next step, of course, is to become a creator without uploading. Let's say you already have our jacket with our name as creator. What you can do? Of course, it's very simple. Uh, you just need to build a prim with your name as creator, and you need to click on the jacket as a first item, then second click with holding shift down on the uh, on the prim. Now you can click control L to link those or you can go here to build link and it will do the same thing. Now I can take this back to my inventory. And this is okay. I need to do this again because what we did is wrong. I obviously unlink those things. Let's take a look. Yeah, create a mess. So basically, I want to link this and this. I go here to click link, and I need to take this back to my inventory. Okay, now this is correct. So uh, now, because I have a prim that is not rigged, I need to wear it on the correct positions for a jacket. So the correct position for a jacket, of course, is a spine or chest, but I'll use a spine here. Now notice what's happened. My box is here and my jacket is here. Now I will make a copy. No, for, let us go first to this uh, stand here set and we need to make some changes. Now I take this box, edit linked, and I need to put it somewhere in the middle for example, I need to scale it down. Okay, Control Z, stretch both sides. I need to scale it down. Now, in order to fix this, you need to scale it uh, the best possible way in order to hide it inside the avatar body. And you are pretty much done. This object and this link set will have your name as creator. Uh, this is a pretty basic stuff, but the important part is to wear this new link set on the correct position. Now let's talk about how to make our object uh, or our um, rigged link set um, inspectable from others. Now, 
if I just detach this and wear this, you notice I cannot inspect this, I cannot go to edit, I cannot start working on this, or my uh, other people will not be able to see nothing. So in order to edit this, I need to go to normal print, go to edit mode, and then click on this. But this is won't happen uh, with other people that are trying to inspect your clothing. So how to do this? Let's go back to our original object and with the box. So what I need to do now is to select this box, edit link parts, and start shaping this box to be bigger. No matter that you are already the creator of this item, you need to do this if you want your object to be inspectable. Now notice, I'm trying to cover um, the main part of the jacket here, which is the torso part. I'm not trying to cover the, the hands, for example. Uh, I'm trying to cover the main part uh, as best I could. <clears throat> Okay, I'm done here, so what I need to do now is to is to make uh, this box blank. Then I want to make this box black, full bright, and I want to make the box 99% transparent. Not 100%, but 99%. Now, the box is invisible, you, you can't see the box, it's very hard to notice it, but basically it's invisible, it doesn't uh, change how your jacket looks like, but the box is already there. So basically you have a rigged jacket, but if someone tries to inspect you, they will click right click here and notice they will select the box. So it can, they can go to here edit or in in, in their case to make uh, an, an inspect or uh, object profile which is in the new viewers so basically now this particular object is inspectable which is pretty cool okay and finally I want to talk about animations okay let's talk about animations a bit uh, there's a lot of animations on Second Life some of them are created manually some of them are motion captured uh, as you know um, the uh, skeletal structure of the avatar is mimic mimics the uh, the human skeletal structure. So basically, uh, we need we should move like humans uh, in real life. But some people, some animators, create their animations without taking this uh, into account, which means uh, they don't account for uh, limitations of the joint rotations. This means this hand, for example, here uh, is rotated uh, doing the animations too big and a huge amount. So here we can see a very popular problem called candy wrapping. This, uh, uh, this place here on the rigging will be wrapped and twisted and it will, it will look very bad. Another problem is uh, when they don't make the movement correctly. Uh, because, for example, if you want this hand to go up, hands in the air, for example, the correct movement of this hand is to uh, rotate this bone here, or the shoulder bone, uh, to 35 degrees up, and then uh, rotate this bone here, it's, of course it's invisible, rotate this bone here to uh, 55 degrees up, and this bone here is the collar bone. So, Basically, some people uh, make this to be all taken care of from the shoulder bone and they don't move the collarbone and the, of course the rotation takes place and your hands are up in the air but the deformation on the skinning or deformation on the rig clothing will be completely wrong because uh, humans don't move this way. So this is about animations. You need to be t uh, very careful when you purchase animations uh, to t take a look at those things. Uh, because with sculpted clothing, those things are pretty much invisible because when you have attachment here in this place, it will hide those candy wrapping problems or the rotational problems. Uh, but now with rig clothing, uh, you can see very, very bad result here. 
Okay, I hope uh, this tutorial was informative to you and I hope you like it. Uh, that was all for, for now. Bye-bye.